Hey, how are you guys doing? Uh, I'm doing like eight different things with my computer right now. And so it's super bad for it and it's going to be kind of laggy. Hopefully it doesn't matter. I'm just reading text. Sorry this is late. My life is a mess, um, but a good mess. Just a very busy mess. A mess filled with like good things as of recent. But that means a lot more doing things, you know what I mean? And by doing things, I have to like not not play hive swap but now i have a free moment for like an hour to record two of these episodes so here we go another night another long long walk despite the blisters you have started to truly feel optimistic you've got a lot going for you these days i do true you're still technically a castaway on a hostile planet with absolutely no hope of rescue but if you're completely honest earth was pretty shitty too you're sure 98% of everyone here is a psychopath who would rip your face off as soon as look at you, but the other 2% are what's going to really make it all worth it. So we got two options here. We got um that guy and and this girl. Um based on her outfit, I'm going to assume that she's friends with Bronya because she's Jade blood. And from what I've been told, that's like the only job you get as Jade is is working in the nursery blue has been pretty hit or miss uh yellow is is kind of my comfort zone you know the internet nerd um they have been for the most part pretty okay um but let's see if this guy who has a bunch of piercings is cool i thought it was a hitler mustache at first it's not being a being a nazi is not very punk which is why there is that song called Nazi punks fuck off. People assume they mean punk as a pejorative, but it's actually like, you should listen to the lyrics of that song. It's a different thing. It's people dressing up as punks, saying they're punks, but also being Nazis. And it's like, dude, you're doing the punk thing wrong if you're in line with the, the, the fascists, you know? That's just not how punks work, dude. That's what the song's about. It's not that, you know, punks are bad. It's that Nazi punks are bad. Does that make... Okay, anyway. I'm rambling, but that's why you're here, I assume. And maybe you're pushing your luck at this point. A reasonable person would just hit up one of their many, many friend, new friends and find a place to crash. Yes, a reasonable person would. But the night is young, so to speak, and you have a good feeling about this particular desolate stretch of road. You're just wondering where you should hide out for the next day. When a long car pulls up next to you on the street, you hunch your shoulders and keep walking, hoping that they're just here for the scenery. But you are literally the scenery around here, so when the back door opens and two trolls lumber towards you, you can't really say you're surprised. You're a little surprised when they each grab... Is there just no music? Did I unplug my headset? What's going on? Here. Okay, so my headset still works. Um, that's good. There's just no fucking music in Hive Swap for some unknown reason. Cause look, th th I don't know. So that's fucking weird. Anyway. Uh, you were a little surprised when they each grab... Okay, I already said that. Uh, up until now, you found that trolls to be surprisingly chatty. You aren't expecting the assault and ask questions later approach. The car takes off before you have time to catch your breath, and you'll never catch that breath. It's blocked behind you now. It's loose. And you are without your breath face-to-face -face with a troll who's leaning back in a bench seat. Just straight chillin'. The dome light glints off his blue eyes, and... Someone less hip than you might describe him as way too many piercings. Did I say that earlier? That he had way too many piercings? Because, um... I don't know. Piercings just aren't my thing. I watched the Punisher movie. Um, I think it was like the 1990s version. When I was over at a friend's house. And that kind of swore me off on piercings. Because, like, the, the dude, he's fighting this guy. And the dude has, like, a nose piercing. So he just straight rips it out. And, like, takes, like, the fucking dude's nose off with it almost. And it's like, damn. 
the more piercings I have, the more places I have for someone to grab my body with and rip it off. I want to make it easy for people to rip chunks of my body off, so I decided no piercings. Tattoos, yes. I'm broke as fuck, so I don't have any. But if I did, I would. That wasn't a good sentence, but we're going with it. Okay, I can't back up, but... Hey. Hey. You murmur at a hello while... Tr I'm gonna bring that down on my end. You murmur a hello while trying not to meet those alarming blue eyes because you're already amassed quite a few a cache of high blood hoes. You know what blue typically means for you. Yikes o'clock. You don't love the idea of throwing yourself- Is he like supposed to be Skrillex? Also, I've noticed there's like a new trend with hairstyles and it looks like, I don't know, when you hit random on a fucking character creator. It's like this, except for it's just the patch right here. And that's it. The rest of it's shaven. I've seen like at least four fuckers in my store with that outfit. And one rando at a, like a grocery store. So I have to assume it's a thing, but it makes you look like a total jackass. This? This is trendy. I get it. But that, that other one just makes you look like a fucking, like, flaccid unicorn made out of hair. It's not a good look. This coming from someone who got insulted once by, um, she was sort of an ex. Anyway, her mom uh, said that I look like a rooster. Well, her mom and her dad said I look like a rooster for my mohawk. Which, I mean, fuck you. And fuck her. Because fuck that. You don't love the idea of throwing yourself out of a moving vehicle, but you don't also love being stuck inside of one with a high blood. With past evidence uh, has shown that although wild acts of foolhardy daring end in pain and embarrassment, you have not actually been killed yet. If you didn't die then, you probably won't die now. That's 100% how probability works. You open the door and before the troll or his ruffians have a chance to protest, you ollie out of there. You were right. You don't die, but it sucks. Oh. Wow, that was a short chapter. Let's try that again. But this time, not throw ourselves out of a moving vehicle. I remember hearing something about, um, who is it? Uh, the, the lead singer for Guns N' Roses uh, ended up doing that once when... It was Axel. He jumped out of a moving vehicle once because um, Slash asked him about some, like, money he owed him. Hey yourself, asshole. Oh, damn. Some of your news found self-confidence just bubbled out of you like split spit up from an infant it's going to go bad fast but instead of immediately murdering you he looks you up and down immediately checking you out in all of your rackety glory he smiles slow and lazy he does things to your guts it does things to your guts friendship things his smile stretches wider going slightly lopsided from his piercings he looks like he he looks like he likes what he sees, even if what he sees is you being a rude bitch. Fair. I did just get my boys to drag you off the street. I get how that equals not chill. Sorry about all that. I'm Malik. Malik doesn't look too sorry, but you're distracted by one of his boys who's just looking at you through a familiar pair of eyes hidden behind a fall of dark bangs. Oh my god, he's alive?! Holy shit! I cannot believe he's actually alive. Also, they're buns. Cause he's a hot dog. He's... Game. You and your... Hot dogs. Hey, I was wondering if you remember me. Remember you? You doubt you'll forget, even with extensive therapy. Aw. Sorry about the cloak and, da cloak and laser. I just read that as what it would be, but this is fucking Homestuck, so who knows what letters or words are gonna come up could just be anything cloak and laser bullshit just couldn't let anybody else get it. I used to spell laser with a Z but it's laser with an S because it's an acronym I forget for what but there's no words that start with Z aside from like zebra I don't think lasers have anything to do with zebras so it wouldn't be a Z it would be an S for like Stromthopic. that sounds like a science word 
couldn't just let anyone else get their friends on fronds on you first. You know. Wow, he was like looking for you, like specifically? For sure, dude. I've been following you. Really? You don't feel like you would have noticed someone you feel like you would have noticed someone like him. I'm gonna turn this down like eight hundred percent, because it's way louder since I cranked it to hear Africa by Toto, but done uh as uh the dad from Johnny Johnny still uh, telling lies. He doesn't exactly blend in. Malik holds up his palm husk with your chitter half or with the chitter half open. You recognize your own profile. Your follower account has gone up significantly since last time you checked. Right. So everyone equals going on this new. Is that supposed to be pronounced? So everyone going on about this new chitter account, Alien Invasion of One. Figured it a publicity stunt or imperial propaganda. Uninteresting, not worth my time. But then when I started thinking, what if it's not? What if this is... I think this is supposed to be read as is. What if this genuinely is an invasion? How the hell are they survived this long? The drones should have obliterated a cold bait son of a bitch like you right away. That's literally what I said. It should have taken your hornless head off to pure grease ago. I don't know what that means. They haven't. Why? Is what I keep... Yeah, that works. Is what I keep asking myself. Then I figured out how you must be doing it. Without meaning to you, lean towards him. Have you finally found someone who understands and appreciates just how terrific you are at friendship maneuvers? Who really gets this area of study? You're a robot. Oh, God damn it! Not even close, but he's obviously an avid... In, he's obviously and avidly interested in that well you tell a tiny little fib i guess i'm a robot hell yeah hey that's kind of crazy i didn't know you were a robot <laughs> wild i guess it makes sense though you did have a sixth sense for me and where to find it malik looks intrigued meat tracker that is interesting sure you just hope he doesn't try and test that functionality you doubt you'll have another meat miracle in you but all he does is Keeps, it's weird now reading is as is. Keeps giving you a piercing look between his texting furiously. He snaps a photo of you. Oh no, he's not going to post that on Twitter. Hashtag robot. Can't be hashtag. Can't be in a hashtag. Everyone will know that you're lying and blow up your cover. Not to mention your mentions. Don't worry about that. Social media gives me the hives. I have a gorgle alert set for a certain combination of words. After... Zebra's place, you're kind of expecting another lavish palace. But when you get out of the car, you see that Malik's isn't an indigo. He's a cerulean, like L word and. Oh, fuck, who was that? Armor L word. L word was chill. I'd hang out with L word. Is like. Cerulean like punks and thugs and. I don't know. Whatever that other thing is. Like metalheads? Is that where I can find, like, people who would go to Hot Topic? Because I could hang out with them. And that one girl who kept boy- Oh, right, there's that, too. You're also starting to think that people's hives have more to do with taste than cast. Amnesia had a homely little art studio, and Targoria had all those vases and shit. Before he leads you inside of the apartment building, Malik turns to Daimian and the other Lobra- low blood and starts messing around on his palm husk again. Nice jobs, guys. I'm rerouting a Slytherin drone shipment as we speak. Trey up, I'm sending you those DVDs you wanted. They'll be at your hive when you arrive. The bronze blood, blonde, bronze blood ruffian bows to Malik. He looks a little uncomfortable and pats him awkwardly on the arm. And Damien, I'll send your shit to uh, that shrub you live in. Thanks, man. You know, my offer still stands. I got a couple extra coops if you're sick of living rough. Damien shrugs. Thanks, but I can't be tied down. Nice to see you again. Hey, man. If I could live in a shrub and just eat hot dogs, and if that was enough for me, I'd fucking do it. Can you imagine what your rent would be like? Like in Austin, you'd only have to pay like $800, $900 for a shrub. You and Malik ride the elevator all the way down, to, or all the way to the top of the hive stem, and he leads you to a surprisingly tasteful loft apartment. Come on, my shit is upstairs. Isn't this, isn't the whole apartment his shit? 
Yeah, technically. Let's go upstairs, though. He brings you up to a higher level that has a recoup raccoon shoved into one wall and a couch shoved against the other. They're both afterthoughts to just an ungodly amount of computer shit. Right when you got here, you probably wouldn't have been able to tell what it was, but now you're so used to Alternia's weird bug tech. Squishy and organic and almost certainly alive, at least in the way that plants are alive, though a couple of wires are still almost definitely slithering. Malik sits down in front of one of his screens and wakes it with a single swipe of his claw. He gestures to you lazily into one of the several office chairs. It squeaks as you sit down and sinks a little under your weight. He proceeds to ignore you and type a list of commands into a text box. Then he pushes himself across to another screen with an alert flashing in one corner. You know what all this is adding up to. He's an IT guy. No, I prefer to be called... Oh, shit. Huh? I have a joke I do where someone calls me a hacker and I say, I prefer to be called information specialist, but now that's ruined. Oh shit, hacker was totally your next guess. You can do it again. Nah, I'm almost gone. No worries. So he's a hacker. That's pretty good and subversive. You wonder if he's part of Teresa's secret anti-government movement. You almost ask, then stop yourself at last second. Whatever Teresia's anarchist leanings are, you aren't going to blab about them to this rando cerulean. As much as you'd love to meet new friends, you really aren't one to throw in another under the scuttle the fucking bus for no reason was there like a is there something on the other sides of his head there did i miss see that there for a second it went away as soon as i clicked yeah not a lot of blues get down to this sort of thing gold bloods are better with tech they got that living battery nose you know how it goes oh uh, well gold bloods you've met have been well a dodge said Adaja said that scouter thing and Crumpum hacked the phone and something, whatever, it was a while ago. Zebdi mostly just liked fanfic. Interesting that you think that they would be, would have programmed you with cultural stereotypes. Huh? Oh, right, you're a robot. So this is, he's a hacker. He's got a bunch of tech stuff. I've treaded that line before. I'm not a hacker, but I like to like, part build shit. I'm not smart enough to know what I'm doing, but I made a fan. It sucks up the solder that I use when I, uh, I use my soldering iron. I made it out of a fan. It was a computer fan formerly, but now it's battery operated. I'm more crafty than I am smart. I can figure out how to make things, but it doesn't mean that I know what I'm doing. You sit up straighter and think about circuit boards. Malik messes around some more on his computer in front. Anyway, my point is that he's going to do something horrible to us, but we already knew that because it's fucking hive swap. Malik messes around more on his computer in front. He frowns some more. Then he reaches down and picks up one thick, one of the thick purple wires from the mess on the ground. He pauses. Apparently, he isn't sure where to stick it. Glances down and you cross your legs before you can pull your dress up and start searching for external ports. Because nope, not happening, dude. You don't have any network connections, so I've got to use Ethernet. Don't be lame. You aren't trying to be lame, you just don't want to have things in orifices. Eventually you compromise and let him stick it under your armpit like you're having a, like you're a baby having your temperature taken. You watch him tap away at his screen, marveling at the ludicrous choices you've made in your life that lead you to a troll sticking a wire under your armpit because he can't find your Wi-Fi signal. You sit there as his brow furrows further and further. His frown gets more pronounced. His annoyance bounces him back out of his laid-back, cool guy attitude, blinking purple lights flashing on his piercings. Fuck. Maybe my tech isn't compatible. One of the wires is coming towards you. For a second, you think you finally found a piece of technology that is actually alive. But then with a little flicker of movement at the end of it, you realize it's a white snake with beady, intelligent eyes. A lusus. Don't be scared. He won't hurt you. He's just checking everything out. Of course not. Why would you be afraid of a giant snake winding up your legs? Everybody is really, everybody is really about your legs. You really need to get a pair of pants. Is the snake shaking you for artificial parts? Are snakes particularly, 
particularly sensitive to technology. Is it because they're so long? Hmm, weird. This is a radical situation. I have no idea what to make of you, dude. You feel like such a dickhead. Can you really continue to live this lie? That's what a robot would say. That gets me gutted on a table when he tries to find, like, any sort of ports. If I want him to keep believing I'm a robot, I say something that a robot would say, which is to say that I'm not a robot. Because robots would say that because they don't want you to know that they're robots. But I already admitted that I was a robot earlier, so then... I'm not the kind of robot who would lie about being a robot, so I have to be the kind of robot that tells the truth about being a robot, unless if I think I'm in a threat now of him discovering me actually being a robot, in which case then I need to lie and say that I'm not a robot. Yes. You brace yourself. In your experience, dealing with the fallout of your deceptions is never pleasant. You expect him to throw you out, or at least get a snake at, to your face. Instead, Malik just said, okay, oh, actually believe me, fuck. Just sags back into his desk chair, which settles into a depressed little squeal. He takes his glasses off and then drops them onto his desk, palming at his eyes. He strikes... It strikes you how exhausted he looks. You thought those dark smudges were eyeliner, but they might be eyeliner and despair. I'm wondering if now is a good time to start apologizing. You're getting really good at apologies. It's chill. I was the one who grabbed you off the street. Probably were scared of what I would do to you if you weren't what I hoped you were. Well, more like you were worried about the friend opportunity that could swirl down the drink, but sure, okay, you were also a little scared. Still are. It's a total body-encompassing ambient fear that is always buzzing in the background of everything that you do on Alternia. So subliminal that sometimes you're wondering if it's the total opposite, the complete absence of fear. That is deep, man. In retrospect, it is pretty fucking stupid to assume that a robot is going to so solve my problems. Very true. In your limited experiences, Mo Robots more problems yeah it was just something new you know something I haven't tried yet what is he's what is it he's exactly trying to do so hard to do he seems pretty well off what with hacking drones and shit like that Malik laughs yeah hacking drones that is all bullshit his lustus curls around his ankle affectionately and gives him a little nudge his palm husk rings and he pulls it out of his pocket and just looks at it for a couple of seconds. I can't deal with this right now. Come on. He heads down to the lower floor, waiting at the bottom of the steps to see if you're falling. You are, albeit nervously. You're having a hard time reading, Malik. Maybe it's all the piercings. He gets worse when he calls the, the elevator and then stands back. After you. Murder elevator. You expect swinging blades to come down at you, but they don't. You expect Malik to attack you, but he doesn't. He just slumps moodily against the back of the elevator wall and closes his eyes. His palm husk rings again. His jaw tenses. That's a cool way of doing elevator animation without actually having to animate shit. The elevator goes past the lobby, and it goes past the basement, and the sub-basement. Fuck, what's the sub base? What's the sub of a sub-basement? Um... Do subs have subs? I don't think that's how subs work. I don't know a whole lot about that kinky shit. Dude, what? What? The sub sub basement is just a square dungeon like space, damp trickling down the walls. Your stomach crumples and your heart bounces up into your throat. Oh no. Is this Malik's Cerulean murder dungeon? A phantom pain presses against your rib and arm. But Malik just leads you through the gap in the wall that you initially took for a shadow. It opens into a tunnel with rough stone walls and dirt-covered floor. It's clearly man-made or troll-made. The air get, grows damper and the sound of rushing water gets closer and closer. You emerge from the tunnel and find yourself at the bank of a wide underground river. Malik sits down at the edge. Uh, oh, is that? Oh, I thought it was the end thing, but then I like fully saw it and that's a fucking hand. I've only been in the sewer, like, once. Don't ask. I didn't go very far. Pro tip. If you ever decide to go, like, fucking around a, a sewer, 
it's gross and uh, dangerous because the fumes that get up in there, it's not meant for humans to like actually be in there for any significant amount of time. So uh, you'll fucking die. Pretty sure anyway. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say that you'll die if you go into the sewer without like ventilation. Um, and if I'm wrong, then I don't know. People probably won't be able to sue me about it, right? Don't go in sewers. That seems like decent advice. Malik sits down on the edge and overlook. Sit down. Sorry, this is not as comfortable as the loft. Oh man, Malik brought you to a special place. I don't know as I've had call it special, but I come to this place a lot. But it is a place I come to a lot. You sit down next to him. You get how this could be pretty zen, just watching the dark water flow by and the water glow in eerie, eerie bioluminescence, digging craters underneath Malik's tired, tired eyes. Also, he pulls out his phone and shows you the screen. No husk signal. This is the only place I can really unplug. Kind of relaxing, you know? Oh yeah, you imagine the demands of being an information specialist could really put a dent in your chill. Yeah. No way for me to call the cops if something goes bad. Not that I'd want to call the cops, but you know. You sit down with a rock digging into your ass and allow yourself to appreciate just how deep this gesture of trust really is. Even after you lied to him, he wants to tell you his life story. Fuck, you love life stories. You ask him exactly why, what he wants with your non-existent robot laurels. He said something about reprogramming drones, didn't he? Couldn't he be part of the resistance? Oh, you mean with all that low blood right stuff? Nah. What's even the point? That's a great way to get cold. But he helped out Damien and that other little guy. No, he used Damien and that other little guy as bruisers because he didn't want to get his hands fucking dirty. Yeah, they're cool. I was paying them for my services rendered. Roughing you up. He nudges you with an elbow. Elbow. So far, all I've been able to do is reroute delivery drones. Just some weak saw shit like that. That is a pretty pathetic way to fuck up the system. I'm not really sure what he's about. Why care about fucking up the system if you don't want a revolution? I guess I wouldn't mind revolution. Alternia is right. Well, for me, it's all right. Not for everybody. I'm not a fucking misopic that I think myopic. I'm not so fucking myopic to think that I don't have it better than a lot of trolls, but I'm not one of those bulge biters who wank off about the sanctity of the blood and how low bloods get what they deserve. They don't. It blows. I don't blame them for feeling bad or whatever. I just gotta worry about myself. That is all I got energy for. Fuck, I hate that feel. I've known people who are like that. And it's just looks like, dude, you gotta do what you can. Well, he does seem to be doing pretty okay. Like, he has a sweet pad. Yeah. Right, yeah. For half a sweet, maybe. Then it's all gone, everything I've worked for. And I'm up in motherfucking space. Right, the space war. That sounds like a huge drag. Yeah, dude. He tosses a rock across the dark water below. But that is the plan, right? If I own the drones, I own the whole system. I own the Ares. They'd be pairing my game with my rules. His eyes glint in the semi-darkness. And so does a little hint of the fang when he smiles. His piercings light up like pointy or tiny points of fire. Also, there is something most definitely like right on the other side of that, and I'm not a fan of it. You tell him that that sure sounds like revolution talk to you. Possibly villain talk. He grins like you're flattering him. Right, but I'm sweeps away from that, and other hackers won't. I mean, I won't work alone. I'm not fucking psionic. I can't use my honey won't kill me the way that it would a rusty but i definitely get the runs i don't have the sweets i have the months i have months maybe pergrees is that days i think a sweet must be a year they keep months for some fucking reason you ask him if he thinks things are going to be really bad for him up there in space like I said, I'm not psychic, so no one is going to turn me into a battery. Well, make me a fucking soldier or a spy. What about attacker skills? Oh yeah, check out all my illegal activities. Please give me a good assignment. Hell no. Yeah, he really couldn't put that on his resume. 
If I was high blood, I could get away with it, probably. They might think it was cute if I was low blood. But mid-cast? Like, no way. Fuck, there's gotta be something. He pulls out his palm husk and frantically starts tapping away. Wait, you thought you didn't have any signal down here. Yeah, but I got a Wi-Fi hotspot. What am I, some kind of fucking Luddite? He gestures one of his earrings. You aren't sure if he means one of his jewelry is a Wi-Fi hotspot or if that's the troll gesture for, are you an idiot? Hey, buddy. You said you were gonna unplug. It's important to your mental health, isn't it? Getting off the internet once in a while? You can't really speak for everyone, but since you're only very recently become an internet celeb, uh, fucking recently I've just figured out that going out and doing shit outside of work and outside of this has been really good. I think that's why things have been going well for me. Like, I've just been a better headspace. Like, you know, stress is still there, but just like, I don't know. I got something else to do with my time. Top tip, if you're gonna do anything like this, fucking have a hobby that no one gives a shit about. It's the best thing you can do for yourself. Malak waves you away. You make a grab for his palm husk. You aren't honestly sure why. Maybe you're trying to be flirty or playful or some shit because everyone knows there's nothing more flirty and playful than stealing someone's stuff. Bitches love that. You manage to snatch it away, but your floppy fingers fumble and you Why the fuck did I do that? You threw my tech into the water. Um, Malak puts his hand on your shoulder. Somehow, against all impossible odds, he's still going to be chill. Why don't no, we're gonna get thrown in. You hit the water before you know it's going happening. This isn't freezing, but you sure as hell isn't balmy either. The current grabs you and tugs you under. Your knees and elbows scrape the rocks and dress tangles around your legs and makes it hard for you to kick back towards the surface. The water is so dark you don't even know where the surface is. Just when you're about to make peace with the fact that your grave is going to be a watery one, something grabs you from behind and hauls you upward. You grasp down air, choking in more water than anything else. Two strong hands push you back up on the bank. You begin smacking you on the back. You don't think it'll help you cough up any water, but you do think it's gonna bruise. What kind of fucking... He's got his shirt off. I know there's fucking weird ass fan art of this dude. I just expect it. I... I fucking know you guys. I know you guys too fucking well. My bad, dude. That was a reflex. You threw my shirt in the water, so I threw yours. Are you okay? You hack up one more gas of water and give Malix a thumbs up. He's wet as you are. Hair slicked back on his forehead. Makes his eyes look huge and impossibly blue. He jumped in to save your clumsy ass. His shirt is gone and... Hey, now you notice the location of two more piercings. But he has a third one that we're not gonna see. But if you're drawing fan art, you know what I'm fucking talking about. You apologize for grabbing his phone and in retrospect, you shouldn't have tried to be cute at the edge of a river. Yeah, you don't have to try. I mean, fuck. Gay. Malak flushes. Right, now you just look like a drowned squeak beast. Sorry I fucked up your rumpus robe. I'll lend you something. Cool, you're kind of over that dress anyway. Hey. Mock twists his claws together. You aren't gonna tell people what I said earlier. I'm not not afraid to go off this planet. Just, you know. This time you do know. You tell him that your secret is safe with him. If you do find any actual robots in your travel, you'll send him his way. <laughs> Thanks here. He helps you to your feet. Damn, it's cold down here. You he had something. I'll get you something when we get back upstairs, as long as you don't wear, mind wearing my sign. Can't think of anything you'd like more, honestly. Friendship. I don't know how that fucking worked. Like, don't throw a tech dude's shit in the fucking sewer. Absolute fucking gremlin. Anyway, um, that episode happened. Uh, I think I'm gonna be doing these every other days. Uh, because I'm currently recording this right before I go live on Twitch. And so, if I don't do it every other day, then I won't have a fucking... 
uh, video for the next couple of days that I'm working. And then I still have my schedule this week because it's supposed to be posted Tuesday, but it's fucking Thursday. And guess what days I'm working next week? Because I don't fucking know. And your guess is as good as mine. Anyway, um, if you like this video, let me know. If you didn't like this video, let me know. If you want to see more of this, um, good, because I'm posting the next one in, you know, a couple days. If you don't want to see more of this, well, let me know, I guess. I guess I'll just know that based on views, though. But anyway. Um, all right. Bye, y'all. See you, see you in a couple days. Also, there will be a video tomorrow, but it won't be related to the, you know, Hive Swap. It'll, I don't know what it is yet. Anyway, bye.